All right, let's uh, get some analysis. Let's bring in Arizona Republican Congressman Trent uh, Franks. Uh, uh, he's a key member of the House Armed Services Committee. He's joining us from Jerusalem right now, where he's got meetings with Israeli leaders going on. Let's talk about North Korea for a moment, Congressman. Uh, the North Koreans now say forget about diplomacy until they are sure they have an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the United States. You heard Will Ripley report that at the top of uh, our program this hour. What's your reaction to what we're hearing from the North Koreans? Well, Wolf, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Uh, you know that the, the North Koreans have been practicing a brinksmanship for a long time. They have considered what's happened in past negotiations with Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, and each time that they pushed the envelope, as it were, they ended up gaining great uh, compensation. And they've now watched uh, this uh, last administration make a deal with uh, Iran that was extremely lucrative to Iran. So I think that uh, they understand the danger of any sort of real conflict with the United States. But I think it's going to take a lot of courage and a lot of clarity. And I, I would suggest to you that uh, Donald Trump has played this very well. He's made it clear to the, to the North Koreans that uh, there's a different guy in the White House now. And uh, he said some things that I think caused them to, to back up a little bit and say we need to reassess because we may be in a dangerous circumstance here. What's, I know you see a connection, and you just sort of uh, pointed that out, between the North Korean nuclear program, and they may have 60, they may already have 80 nuclear bombs. They certainly have the capability of miniaturizing those nuclear bombs and putting them on, uh, on long-range missiles, uh, intermediate-range missiles, and maybe eventually intercontinental ballistic missiles. But what is your analysis? Why do you see that connected to the president's decision on the Iran nuclear deal, which he announced on Friday? Well, Iran is watching very closely uh, what we do with North Korea and vice versa. Uh, there is no question that the connection is real. The, the past uh, connection has been very clear. And I would just suggest to you, Wolf, that uh, when we talk about uh, keeping Iran at a year breakout, you know, uh, with the additional cash infusion that Iran has had, they could easily, if, uh, if North Korea would be uh, amenable, purchase or buy uh, nuclear warheads from North Korea, and then they could break out in a week. And the, the reality here is that uh, we've got a very dangerous situation on our hands, and this president needs to continue, I believe, on the track he's on, and for him to take counsel from those that put us in this very untenable position doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But Iran says they, uh, they won't support any changes to the deal, which was worked out not just with the United States, but with the other permanent members of the U.N. Security Council and Germany. Uh, and uh, the president now says it's in the hands of Congress. So what do you want Congress to do? Well, I hope Congress can make some changes, uh, and I certainly advocated for those the first time. I was very much against the Iran deal, as you know. Uh, it uh, puts Iran on a path, a, a trajectory, to not only gaining a nuclear weapons capability, but to, to be able to do it under a legal, legal protocol. And uh, we need to be able to inspect anywhere in, in, in Iran. We need to be, be able to have clarity that they have completely dismantled their capability. And we need to make sure that these sunset uh, provisions are out of the agreement, because Iran remains the world's largest promoter of, of terrorism in the world. And if that turns to nuclear terrorism, it's a scenario that I just can't imagine, given the fact that I'm a father of nine-year-old twins. There's a very ominous development happening in Iraq right now. There seems to be a military confrontation emerging between Kurdish forces, the Perga in the northern part of Iraq, and the Iraqi military. The Iraqi military, at least some of the militias that seem to be there, backed by the Iranians. Uh, the U.S. obviously has a very close relationship with the Peshmerga, with the Kurds, also a very close relationship with the Iraqi government. Uh, what should the U.S. do? Well, first of all, the U.S. has to end its studied indifference uh, toward our ally, the Kurds. The Kurds have shown great courage in being able to stand up uh, against ISIS when no one else stood with them. Uh, they have shown uh, pluralism that is important to the entire region, and I believe it's very important that we protect them and, and do everything that we can to make it clear that we're on their side right now. And I, ha I haven't seen that, uh, and I'm, I'm very concerned about that. You know, last week our office issued a press, a press release 
uh, that said that we saw these forces amassing. And uh, this was, in fact, uh, something that made us call upon uh, Prime Minister uh, Abadi, uh, Abadi to, uh, to keep his promise. He promised that there would be no confrontation or military moves. And yet the fact is that, as you said, uh, Iran has insinuated itself into the uh, Iraqi government to the extent, especially the military side, that we don't know who's doing what here right now. And Iraq has to back away from Iran, because if they're a puppet of Iran at this point, then we need to back away from Iraq and, and back the Kurds and do what we can to have some sort of salvation of the system there as best we can. Now, would you support an independent Kurdistan? They voted a non-binding referendum the other day in favor, the Kurds did, in favor of an independent Kurdistan. Would, would you support that? You know, I have to, have to be direct. Uh, uh, I, I would. Uh, I want to make sure that the timing is right here because it's a very delicate situation. But, you know, the United States of America, we, we uh, wanted to be a, a people that uh, considered our own lot in this world, and we should be the first up for a group like the Kurds who have shown this courage to, to stand up to uh, evil in, in, in Iraq. And I, uh, I would uh, back their independence, and I hope we can somehow do it in a way that uh, is at, at the right time. And I also think it's important that the Kurds will make sure that the, the Christian Defense Forces in the Nineveh Plain have their own uh, type of uh, ability to defend themselves as well. Otherwise, we're going to see, you know, the whole... Christian uh, presence uh, excised from Iraq. Congressman Trent Franks, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. You know, uh, Wolf, I have to say, I heard children downstairs here when I was walking up uh, singing uh, Israeli songs, uh, schoolgirls. And that's in spite of the fact that Israel has 100,000 missiles aimed at them and, and possibly a nuclear threat from Iran. There's always hope here in, in Jerusalem. And I just thank God for that and thank God for Israel. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see you Thank back you, uh, here in Washington. Safe travels. Trent Franks, member of the Armed Services Committee Thank from you, Arizona. Sir.